My coverage of Computex 2017 is brought to you by MSI, EVGA, Tesoro, G-Skill, and Cooler Master. All right, guys, welcome to my Computex coverage proper, and I'm going to start off with the big announcement. The big announcement is coming from Intel today, and uh, you guys have heard some rumors probably about all this stuff, but they are confirming the launch of the i9 series of uh, what is now going to be known as the Core X series of CPUs. So I have a bunch of information. I'm going to kind of run down a lot of this for you guys, and then towards the end, I'm going to give some closing commentary, my thoughts on what they have going on here. So this is the newest high-end desktop platform, X299 chipset, and LGA 2066 socket is uh, what the motherboards will be sporting. And we're gonna have Core i5, Core i7, and Core i9 X series CPUs in this lineup. The Core i9 family is gonna include CPUs that range all the way from four cores all the way up to 18 cores, most of them with hyper-threading, although at least one of them does not. Uh, and there's gonna be nine CPUs in total in this lineup. So that includes a 14 core, a 16 core, and an 18 core CPU that 18 core CPU with hyper threading gives you 36 threads. All these are based on 14 nanometer lithography. All of these CPUs are unlocked for overclocking. And of course, at the top of this range, you have that Halo product, the Core i9 7980 Extreme Edition, 18 core, 36 thread CPU, $1,999. So this is not gonna be cheap. It is a good 300 bucks more than the 6950X was when it launched just about a year ago. It is the first ever teraflop desktop CPU though. Uh, at the low end of this entire lineup, you have the KB Lake X based quad cores, uh, the $242.7640X that does not have hyper threading, so it's a four core, four thread CPU, as well as the $339.7740X with hyper threading that's got 112 watt TDP. Actually, both of those have 112 watt TDPs, and both of them are based on the KB Lake architecture, so they're going to be shipping at higher frequencies, 4.2 gigahertz and 4.5 gigahertz turbo, respectively, for the 7640X and 7740X. Uh, these two CPUs do have some limitations, though, compared to the higher end uh, Skylake X CPU, CPUs in this lineup. They're limited to dual channel memory and 16 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes. Uh, so given that there's also going to be 28 lane CPUs and 44 lane CPUs in this nine CPU stack that Intel's launching, there's probably going to be some extremely confusing X299 motherboard configurations simply because uh, they, depending on what CPU you install, you're going to have either 16, 28, or 44 lanes. Uh, but perhaps more on that as we bring you more coverage throughout this week and perhaps uh, talk to some of the motherboard manufacturers. Above the KB Lake X CPUs, we have Skylake X CPUs. So these are going to all be all the six core and higher parts. Uh, they're all going to have quad channel DDR4 memory support. And again, either 28 or 44 PCI Express 3.0 lanes. Uh, and they're listed at 140 watt TDPs for the ones that we have confirmed. Although they did mention in the documentation that Intel distributed 165 watt TDPs. So some of, the, some of those highest core count CPUs might be a little bit beyond 140 watts. They're all priced from between $390 and $2,000. And you might notice that in the charts provided, the 14 core, 16 core, and 18 core parts don't have all the details that are laid out. And actually, they, they weren't even included in the original presentation that Intel gave us uh, about a week ago. Um, so their TDP might be 165 watts for those higher end ones, but potentially they were added a little bit later uh, in this production cycle. So maybe Intel wasn't always planning on doing 14, 16, and 18 core CPUs. More on that later though. Uh, the X series also has support for Optane memory and Optane SSDs. Uh, also Turbo Boost Max 3.0, that's uh, the successor to Turbo Boost 2.0. That will identify not the single fastest core on the CPU, but the two fastest cores on the CPU give you a little asterisk by them in the BIOS and that will uh, automatically allow you to overclock those CPUs more. Uh, also, they're gonna have a hardware-based solution for this now so you don't have to actually install some software to get Turbo Boost working. So that's pretty nice. Also, the Turbo Boost Max 3.0 only seems to apply to Skylake X CPUs, which would make sense since uh, with the four core, it's not quite as big of a deal to find the fastest cores on the CPU. And we also got some details of the X299 chipset. It will include 30 high-speed I.O. lanes. Those are the lanes that allow you to connect stuff through the chipset, like SATA ports and other things like that, uh, including up to 24 of those that are PCI Express Gen 3 via the DMI 3.0 interface to upgrade to DMI 2.0. Uh, and then among these, you're gonna have uh, connectivity for three Intel RST, Rapid Storage Technology Devices. So PCIe, again, Gen 3.0 by four connectivity. So that's for connecting up high-speed 
NVMe SSDs. So you could potentially have M.2 and U.2 NVMe SSDs in RAID that are controlled by the hardware controller that's part of the chipset. That's something that you currently cannot do on X99, as I have uh, sort of demonstrated in my videos that I posted in the past couple weeks, actually. Uh, also in there, you see you have some support for an Intel i219 Ethernet uh, that's going to be up to the motherboard manufacturer whether or not they actually want to integrate that with the motherboard. And I've also noted a few times in this presentation the uh, rebalanced Intel smart cache hierarchy. You might notice some of the L3 cache numbers here being a little different from like the X299 or the X99 counterparts. Uh, L3 cache sizes that are listed on the chart. Uh, do seem to scale up, but there's no additional information about them, so we'll have to come back to you on that. So that's pretty much all of the raw details that Intel has provided us for right now. Uh, let's move on to my thoughts on this. It's definitely some good news. Let's start with the good news. Uh, there is some price drops that are sprinkled in amongst all of these CPU listings. Even though you might look at a $2,000 top-end processor and say they are raising the price, but they're actually kind of lowering the price for what you would pay, for example, for an 8-core Intel processor. Uh, the 8-core 7820X is $599. The 6900K that you would have had to buy just last week costs 1000 That's a $400 price drop for an 8-core Intel CPU. The 10-core 7900X is $999. 6950X was $1,700. So that is, again, a price drop, depending on how you look at it, of course. Also, I'd like to thank Intel for leaving the K off of the end of any of these SKUs. They're all just an X. That simplifies things. The X works just fine for us. We don't need the K in there. The CPU names are already confusing as it is. And I do have some questions about this launch and hopefully we'll be able to answer these soon, especially once we get parts in for testing. But I have questions about the viability of the KB Lake X CPUs, the four core, four thread, and four core, eight thread options at the bottom of this stack. Uh, they, they do seem to be at odds price to performance wise with Intel's current mainstream platform and what you can get on X270. Also, the fact that they have 16 PCIe lanes, again, means that you're gonna have some really weird configurations with X299 motherboards, and I'm expecting X299 motherboards to be more expensive than what you would pay for a Z270. So whether you have 16, 28, or 44 PCIe lanes might be a fairly heavy amount of reconfiguration of a motherboard, PCI Express slots that may or may not work depending on the CPU you have installed, as well as U.2 and M.2 slots. So that might lead to some confusion. Uh, I think Intel's plan for this is just to be able to say it's an upgrade path. You can get in with a 4-core processor and then upgrade to an 18-core or a 16-core processor down the line. That's certainly a possibility. That would kind of reflect back on like the, 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 the spot that the i7-920 took, for instance, back in the X58 days. Uh, Intel also said that there's been lots of growth, 20% plus in the high-end desktop space. Uh, and their case SKU CPUs from 2015 to 2016, and that's why they have decided to go the route they've gone with this launch. But uh, surely this also has to be at least a bit of a reaction to AMD's uh, recently announced, announced Ryzen uh, Threadripper CPU, which is a 16-core, 32-thread CPU, and it will be on a new high-end desktop platform from AMD that will be in direct competition with this high-end desktop platform from Intel. Case in point, uh, when they originally gave us this presentation, I took a bunch of screen caps. None of those 14-core, 16-core, or 18-core CPUs were even listed. They verbally told us that they existed, and then they sent us an updated deck with the additional information. So it seems like it was a bit of a like, oh crap, we need to add these in here. And it does seem to line up with uh, the way that they want to market the CPUs, especially considering that these are very high-end and very expensive CPUs. So in my humble opinion, Intel is playing a marketing game that's kind of similar to the marketing game that NVIDIA has been playing with Radeon for quite some time. That is that they're pushing their brand as the high-end option, possibly with a higher price than the competition, but also with better validation, quality assurance, and integration with existing technologies. In fact, that Intel has been dominating the CPU space for quite a while. This also, though, means that they need to be able to claim that they have the fastest CPU available in the consumer space, and that is why they added those three more CPUs in the stack with 14-core, 16-core, and 18-core options that they can say are obviously better than what Threadripper would be with its paltry 16-cores and 32-threads. It doesn't really matter that their highest-end CPU costs $2,000. All that matters is, like NVIDIA with the Titan, is that they can say, we have the fastest, and that is a marketing win, again, depending on how you look at it and depending on your opinions of marketing. And that's okay, actually, in my opinion, uh, because look at what competition from AMD has done in this space. From 2014 to 2016, Intel had the 5960X, which they upgraded to the 6950K. In those two years, we got two more cores at the top-end Intel SKU. 
Now, in one year, from 2016 to 2017, they've gone from 10 to 18. That's a pretty significant jump, and uh, I, I guess we have to say thanks, AMD. Uh, but also, of course, thank you to Intel, because uh, as expensive as these may be, and I'm sure lots of people are gonna argue in the comments about the positioning of both companies and everything, it's more options, and it's obviously some very powerful hardware that's coming out. So I'm excited to check it out, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, of course, hit the thumbs up button. I'll be back with more coverage from Computex 2017 here in Taipei, Taiwan very soon. And a big final thanks to my sponsors, Tesoro, G-Skill, EVGA, MSI, as well as Cooler Master. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.